really pray, you've got to have a son's relationship with the Father. I mean, a lot of people don't realize you've got to have a relationship with him, with God, uh, ladies and men. Uh, when you say Father, uh, it, it's a relationship there of somebody that you can trust, uh, that you can call on, that he will take care of. And a lot of people don't have that relationship. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. And John also taught his disciples. Well, they was walking with Jesus. They had been with him. They'd seen the miracles. They'd seen things happen. And, and they wanted that same kind of prayer power in their life. And so they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Then in verse 2, Luke chapter 11, verse 2, and he said unto them, when you pray, say our Father. How many of you can call him Father? Amen. See, if we've got that son or daughter father relationship, we don't have condemnation in our life where when we go to him, we know he's going to give us what we ask. Right. And a, a lot of people don't get their healing. They don't get their needs met because they don't have that son and daughter relationship with the father. And I'm sure you have. I've witnessed to people that uh, they didn't have a relationship with their father and it was hard for them to have a relationship with God. I know one boy that I worked with for years, and I used to witness to him, and, and he would tell me, he said, look, my daddy lied to me, so what makes you think that, that God would be honest to me? And that there's a lot of people that don't have a relationship with God like they should because of the relationship they had with their parents. They've been let that hold them back. And he, and he said, and, it, and he said unto them, when ye pray, say our Father. Say, Father. Father. See, we can call him Father if you've been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus. You can call him Father. I mean, he, uh, that just sets me on fire. I mean, I've got that relationship with him just like I had with my earthly father. My earthly father done gone. But I got a relationship with the heavenly father that's better than I had a relationship with my earthly, earthly father. Because God is the one that created me. He's the one that created everything down here. And I've got that son's relationship with him that I can ask him what I need or what I want. He knows what I need before I ask him. But when I ask him, if I don't waver, he's going to give it to me. Yeah. Amen. So if you say so you've got to have that son or daughter's relationship with him to make it count. And that's what the disciples had if you read the book of Acts. They had a father and a son, a son and a, a son's relationship with the father. And now, so I'm challenging you tonight, check up on your relationship with it. Make sure you've got a son or a, or a daughter relationship with it, and, it, and you can pray effectively. He said, when you pray, say, our what? Our father. And this, this prayer is powerful. Our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. So what's in heaven? It ain't no sickness up there. It ain't no nothing that can hurt you. And he said he wanted his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that settles it. He wants me well. He wants me happy. And just like Third John 1 said, Beloved, above all things, I wish that you would prosper and be in hell as you sold them. Well, the only way you're going to prosper down here is be a giver. I'm not just talking about uh, money, but you got to be a giver. When you come to know Jesus, if you don't start giving, I don't know about your relationship with him because he so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. He gave all he had because he loved us. And when we love him, what are we going to do? 
We're going to be a giver. That's why we're here tonight. We're all givers. Givers. Hallelujah. You look for people to help. It's just something about that uh, on the inside of us, we, we want to do something for somebody at all times that we can. And that's what it's all about. People that run around and beg and all that kind of stuff, they don't never get ahead. Uh, if the only way to get ahead in this life do it God's way. And if you do it God's way, it'll work. Pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Thy will be done. Lord, I want, I want heaven's will in my life. Say that with me. Father, I want heaven's will in my life. Amen. I want heaven's will in my kids' life and in my family's life. I want heaven's will in the church's life and in the family of God that's here in life. Amen. Luke 11, 3. Give us day by day our daily bread. So how, how's he going to take care of us? Day by day. Give us this day my daily bread. How many of you pray that prayer? Come on, Lord. Today is a brand new day. I'm looking for my daily bread. And I believe that daily bread means everything that you'll need that day. And he'll give it to you. Amen. Give us day by day our daily bread. In verse 4, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So we have no choice but to forgive. I can honestly say, before you and before God, I have no all against nobody. I, I don't have no all against. I love everybody whether they love me or not. It don't make any difference. Uh, you know, it really don't make no difference if you love me. It's just so I love you. Right. That's what puts you clear is you love. You love. Because that's what God is. He loves. He loves. And unless you have that son and daughter relationship with the Father, you can't love. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from evil. We're living in an evil world. How many of you found that out? Listen, it, it is evil. I'm telling you, you can't get out. I'm watching the news all the time today. In these shopping malls, Women, women better be careful, boy. boy they, they, they spot them and they run, running and grabbing their pocketbooks and doing everything. And uh, even uh, snatch them out of cars and take it off in the car. I'm, I'm telling you, we're living in a time where I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'll be glad anyway, but I'm glad I'm saved because I believe the Lord coming back soon. Amen. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. In verse 3, give us this day our daily bread. In verse 4, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Then in, in Matthew chapter 6, he gives us the same thing. Verse 9, say our Father. We, we need to get in a habit of saying our Father. After this, verse 9, Matthew 6, 9, we'll go down to 15. After this matter, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father. How many of you started your prayer off our Father? Amen. Our Father, I thank you for healing me in Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. Our Father, we need to we need to get that mentality that God is our Father, and we have a son and a daughter relationship with our Father. Hallelujah! Peter, on the rooftop, praying, went into a trance. Church, it's time that we go into some trances. I'm talking about praying that we got the same Holy Ghost. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know what's holding us back? That son and daughter relationship with the father. 
because it's an individual thing. It's not a not a uh, God wants each individual to have that son and daughter relationship with the Father. And when we got that relationship, we can go right into the throne room like the Bible says, boldly. Hallelujah. You know, my father, I wasn't, I was, I, 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 it didn't bother me to go up and ask him for a bicycle. Uh, many times he would tell me, you know, when we sell this tobacco crop, you'll get a pony. I looked for it. I looked for it. I couldn't wait till he come home with a check to go get the pony. So we got the same relationship with our Heavenly Father that we have supposed to, to have with our earthly Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Our earthly Father was supposed to take care of us. Well, our Heavenly Father is going to take care of us too. Amen. Don't you know He's going to do a better job than our earthly Amen. Father? Amen. And I can show you in the Bible. He said, if a man being evil knows how to give his kids good gifts, how much more? Say, how much more? How much more? more? Will the Heavenly Father give them an ask? Right. Have you asked him for anything today? He said, ask and you would receive that your joy may be full. Amen. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Verse 10. And verse 11, Matthew 6, 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Heavenly Father, give me my daily bread today. Well, my daily bread consists of gas for my truck. Whatever I need to eat, all my bills paid, and the, uh, uh, everything I need. Give me my daily bread today. You know, a lot of times we want to get ahead of the game and give, it, give me my daily <coughs> bread for all month. But he said he'd give you your daily bread every day to take care of you. His grace is sufficient. Verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm sure you've seen fruit on a lot of people's trees that can't forgive. I mean, they, 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 they for some reason or another, they just can't turn things loose. And, and they're They'll talk about people and do like, but if you watch long enough, when that stone goes to rolling back on them, it's not fun. It's not fun. That's why we have to really be careful and keep our son and daughter relationship with the Father right. Amen. It is my job to keep my relationship with him right. It's not your job to, to keep my relationship. It's my job to keep my relationship as a son to God where, where, where I can receive the blessings. Amen. He wants to bless us. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. There's a lot of people that's in trouble because they can't forgive. When you forgive somebody, you don't keep talking about it. You don't keep bringing it up. And you don't let them live rent-free in your mind. Wow. When you forgive somebody, it's gone. Amen. And I thank God uh, that I'm able to do that. And I, and I hope everybody in here is able. If somebody does something to you, just forgive them and keep going because God will reward you for it. Uh, uh, he said, uh, don't put, repay evil with evil overcome evil with good. And, and that's the Christian way, and that's the, that's the way God fights our battle for us. Amen? In Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock. And it shall be opened unto you. So, so see, I've got to ask, I've got to seek, I've got to knock, and I've got to just go after it. You know, uh, many people, uh, they have asked you questions, you know, about people, uh, uh, why this and why that. We don't know why this and why that. Uh, only 
God knows, and and, uh, and and we can trust Him with all outcomes. That the young man down there, I don't know where they made it now. Now they picked up a load of groceries here Monday week uh, at four o'clock. From that, they right in them, loading him up, and I didn't find out till this weekend he's down there, and they they get ready to unplug him. And uh, the doctor said they've done all they can for him. Uh, you bone your got in his lungs. Young man, pastors of church in, in Willette. I mean, who who knows? I mean, only God knows situations like that. Yeah. But God is a healer. Yes, he is. He's a healer. If I die today, He's a healer. He's a healer. Uh, he said He was, and that settles it. Then. And He said the believer will lay hands on the sick, and I'm gonna lay hands on the sick till I leave here. You say, what if they don't get healed? That's God did it, not man. He just said the believer would lay hands on the sick. And he said to anoint the sick with all. Well, many times you'll see people bring people to get them anointed with all. That's because they come in their cell. And I, I tell you, that's a difference. That if, I, if I'm sick, I don't need nobody to bring me. I'm going to run up the aisle. Because I, I want my healing. I want to stay well. God, God don't want to just heal up. He wants us to stay here. But yeah, I'm telling you, you're going to have to fight for it. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you got an enemy down here. And when you confess healing, you might as well get ready because you're going to have to hold back. So the enemy is going to put pressure on you to try to take it away from you. When you confess that my God meets all my needs according to your, his riches and glory, get ready for a fight. But if you hold fast, He'll supply them. Amen. Amen. For, verse 8. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. So that tells me, go after it. Go after it. Don't let nobody hold you back. Go after it. Believe I tell people, shoot, shoot for the moon. If you miss the moon, you hit the stars. <laughs> go for it. I, I, you know, we live in our own world with God, and God's got something for everybody. To do. Yeah. And, and uh, I love what Joel Osteen said, don't let nothing hold you back. Don't let nothing hold you back. And be, be your own encourager, be your own faith builder, and think yourself happy. Yeah. I've been happy all day, but I've been thinking myself happy. <laughs> you thank yourself, Paul said, old king, I think myself happy. Well, all the five minutes of thinking about heaven and you going there will make you happy. I'm telling you, the devil can't go there. In Matthew 21, 22, it said, And all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe it, you shall receive them. All things. What is things? That's everything. But the key to that. Is when I ask, believe I've got it. And that's, that's where most people miss it. Uh, they, they, they ask God to heal them, and then when the pain comes, or the pain, they change their confession. And, and let a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. No matter if I say, Lord, I thank you for healing me, no matter what I look like, feel like, I'm going to have to hold fast to the Word of God. That I was healed 2,000 years ago. I was healed 2,000 years ago, whether I feel like it, look like it, or what, I'm just healed. And a lot of people can't get that through their mind. They think they're lying, and they're not. They're just confessing what the Word says about them. And until a person has that kind of knowledge, especially cancer victims, Unless they have that kind of knowledge, it's hard to hold fast to it when the pain gets so rough. Because I tell you, the pain can get so rough that you can want to leave here. I've seen, my daddy was that way. He said, son, y'all let me go. My sister called me on Friday night. And uh, on Friday night, and she'd been battling cancer. And she, and she called me, but she said, Bubba, let me go. She said, I'm tired of suffering. I said, you sure you want to go? She said, yeah. And 
And so I released her, and the next morning they called, and she was gone. <coughs> I'm, I'm telling you, the pain can get so severe, and you know you've got heaven to go to. Bless God, you, you're ready to get out of here. That, that's why it's important to feed your faith. Because there will come a day in your life and my day that only my faith will work. That my relationship with the Father, if it's not a son or a daughter relationship, it won't work. It, you've got to have a son or a daughter relationship with your Father. And, and many people don't have that relationship. Uh, uh, they, they, they don't work on their father and the son and daughter relationship to the father. I really believe that's where a lot of us are missing it, that we don't have that relationship with God, that, that father relationship. When, when you have that son and daughter relationship with the father, you can lay down and sleep if the wind's blowing or the storm or whatever, because you know he's going to take care of it. Amen. And again, amen. 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 I, I want, I want a, a relationship with him that nothing can separate me from, from the Father. Nothing. Paul said nothing uh, will separate you from the love of God. So if nothing will separate me from the love of God, I'm in good shape. Did you know? Amen. In Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, If thou can believe all things are possible, him before. I'm a believer. Bless God, I tell you what, I, I don't know about y'all, but I have good imaginations. Uh, I just dream of uh, seeing people blessed. That's, that's yeah. my heart. Dude. I want to see people blessed. Since there are people blessed that, that they come out of bondage and, and, uh, and, and be able to live free and happy. Amen. In James 5, 16, James said, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, we need to have somebody, me and, me and, me and Pastor Dorothy talk every morning. Uh, I get up and, and make the coffee and I fix her coffee and I go upstairs and we got a place we sit down and talk. have any fault, we can confess it to one another, and, and, and a man and wife should be able to do that without gouging one another's eyes, yeah, right. trying to help one another, because the one that's close to you know you better than anybody. Yeah. Jojo, uh, she, she, she knows me better than anybody, I guess. <laughs> she, she, she's something else. Uh, she's ringing at bells and they didn't laugh. I said, what do you want, girl? Give me, give me a Dr. Pepper. Oh, Dr. Pepper. Kids, you can't be kids. I'm, I'm, I'm fixing her the Lord's Prayer. I want to learn the Lord's Prayer. You know, it, uh, the Lord's Prayer is probably prayed more than any prayer, but less understood. Yeah, sure. Because it's powerful. God will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and, and to address him as our father. I mean, a son and a daughter relationship with the father. I mean, if we just think about it, if we got that kind of relationship with our father, hey, we in good standing. A son and daughter relationship. I'm going to go further with this because I believe, I believe God's getting ready to do something through prayer. If you read the book of Acts, I mean, I mean, the buildings even shook, uh, the jails rocked, and, and uh, uh, angels walked in the jails and brought people out. Well, we we got the same covenant that they got. Yeah. We got the same covenant. We just need that son and daughter relationship with the father that they had. Hallelujah. I mean, uh, I think about Peter praying on the rooftop, going into a trance. I mean, uh, again, if you read the Mary Woodworth Edwards books and, and all that, the same thing happened in their meetings. Uh, 
of this one lady, uh, the power of God got so strong in the place, she just froze and for three hours stood there. And uh, they had, the power of God hit the people and they had to just, uh, when, they, when they, uh, they closed the building down, they had to carry them out. I'm telling you, I'm looking for that. Yeah. And I believe if we'll all have that father and that son and daughter relationship with the father where we can just call down heaven in this place. Hallelujah. That a sinner can't sit in here. He'll either have to run to the altar or run for the street. Yeah. I'm telling you, I pray. I want y'all to pray with me. Yeah. Because, because if a person comes in here and they're not saved, I want, I want the Holy Spirit to convict them so much that, that they can't stand it. They can't stand it. That, and that's what it's going to take. Amen. <coughs> James 1.22 said, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own son. And uh, James 1, 6 through 8. But let him ask in faith. So see, uh, many people don't realize how important faith is. Let him ask in what? Faith. Let him ask whatever you're praying for, ask in faith. Nothing waver. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And so we don't want to be double-minded. We want to be stable. We want to have that son and daughter relationship with the Father where we can just... It's so easy to worship him when you've got that relationship. Many, many people can't worship. They don't have that son and daughter relationship with the Father. But when I think of Jesus, my hand just goes up. And, and I, I'm, I feel just like a bird to float around and praise him. Hallelujah. But Paul put uh, welcome Holy Spirit. We're going to praise him a little while. Thank you.